Hi everyone, welcome to Sandra Sensations. Thanks for joining me. As promised, a couple of my viewers have asked me, please show some of your paintings dry. So I'm going to take a quick couple minutes just to show you some dry ones. This one is the lake, icy lake scenery one I did. Turned out beautiful, dried nicely. This one is a Kathleen Miller inspired painting right there. Love this one. I don't know if you can see on camera how shiny that paint is, but it's just awesome. And with the drippings, I like to do paintings. So I just have a couple of little ones that I did with some of my table drippings from doing these paintings all the time. And I also have this guy dry, which was actually a Dutch pour turned into a flower painting with two smaller ones. There we go. These guys are dry. And then we have, let's pile that aside for a second, another Kathleen Miller inspired this one was like a stained glass is what I was hoping for with the white swipe instead of the black. I'm not so sure the white makes it look like stained glass, but it turned out to be a beautiful painting. Nice shiny paint. And this one is my very first pretty much attempt as at my wrecked. I guess it's a, uh, what, what does she call it? She calls it a drizzle, a swipe, a wreck, and a spin. Love this one. Look at how shiny that paint is in there. Just awesome. So there we go. There's a quick little view of some of the stuff that I had done. As promised, there you go. A quick view of some dry stuff. Okay, I'm going to take two or three minutes to put the base down on my canvas and get ready to do another painting. Stick with me, you guys. everybody I got the white down on my 10 by 20 canvas if any of you are curious what I spread it with was a fondant spreader love this thing I think it was six dollars on Amazon and it was definitely a good buy I really like spreading the paint with that speaking of Amazon if you see anything I use for tools like my butane torch or or the fondant spreader anything like that you'll find links in the description if you click on the link for Amazon and buy something through my link, I'll get a tiny commission on a gift card from Amazon to replenish some of my stock. So if you feel like you need something that you see me use, go ahead and order it. Okay, I have got a new item just printed off the 3D printer and it is an open split cup. No bottom to it. So instead of an open cup, I'm going to try and do myself an open split cup. Let's see how it goes. I got four colors picked. I've got silver, a bright blue, teal, and a blue-black mixture I did myself, which is bright blue and black mixed together. All right, let's get this happening. Now, if you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And everybody that keeps coming back, you know how much I appreciate you. Thank you so much. 
keep the thumbs up and the comments coming. Love reading it all. And it really does make my day as soon as I get in the door from work and I see that I have some messages to read. Okay, first one going down is the bright blue. And I'm just going to fill it up pretty much to the top. There we go. Then I'm going to do my teal. Now as I'm pouring this paint, it's a good time for you to hit that notification bell right beside the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I open, upload another video, I should say. There we go, silver's going in and my last one is going to be my blue black. Now let's see how well an open split cup will do for a painting. This is a test run for all of us. I'm just going to give it a twist as I travel. Now these paints are mixed with a little bit of Floetrol. These are the teal is the only one that's not a ready mixed paint. This was 40% acrylic paint, 60% Floetrol with a tiny bit of water. The bright blue is right out of the bottle with about three teaspoons of Floetrol in it. I only added it just to hope it would accent cells because I didn't know if the ready mix stuff was going to have any cells happening. Ooh, I'm doing good for paint so far. I'm at the halfway mark roughly and I have about a half a cylinder of paint. So that's pretty cool. I might actually get all the way to the end here. I think it's just time to lift it. There we go. Okay, I'm going to give it a quick little torch. Get all those bubbles out. And then I think I'm just going to go with a little bit of a tilt. Now I have underneath my canvas just some of these square little, these are done on a 3D printer as well. It's just a little stand, the paint can leak through just to raise my canvas up a little bit and then I didn't have to put pins at the bottom of my canvas. Lucky for me I have this amazing man in my life that likes to play around with techie stuff and a 3D printer is right up his alley. Now sorry if you're going to see the back of the canvas. I'll try and keep it in frame as much as I can. I do want to have some of the negative space still. Love these colors. Okay, I'm good with that corner. Okay, I'm going to go back this way a bit. Sorry again, you're probably going to see the back of the canvas. Okay, I'm going to stop for a minute, place it back down. Give it a quick little torch again, just to see what it's doing. I might just leave it as is. We'll see. <clears throat> I 
Yes, I think I am going to leave it exactly as is. Sometimes I fiddle too much with my paintings, and I'm happy with the look of that. That looks really nice. All right, everybody. I know that was a quick video. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, hit subscribe. Come back and watch another video. Guaranteed, Greg will be posting one right now for you to click on. Stick around and watch. Thanks again, everyone.